Welcome to the Stacked Supplement Podcast, the premier source for supplement news and reviews. Welcome to another interview for the Stacked Supplement Podcast. And this time around, we have one of the, the most known people, I guess, on the on the industry side of supplements. Um, and a person I've admired for a while since being introduced to the brand, I don't know, like four years ago, I think it was. It wasn't that long ago. Uh, and we have uh, Mark Leisure from Nutribio. Hey, Shane, how are you? Thanks for having me on board today. Yeah, so I mean, we'll, we'll kick things off talking about, obviously, 2020, which was which was both good and bad for, for many people. Uh, some people had no bad. Some people had only bad. Uh, Nutribio looked like it had, I would say, one of the most impressive years I had seen out of, out of uh, Nutribio, aside from the fact that the year prior, we saw those six months of nonstop releases, which still to this day is something that I have never seen matched uh, and I don't imagine will be matched even when you, because I remember you told me you were going to do it uh, and you said we're going to do three months of releases we're going to do one release every week for three months and I was like bullshit but whatever and then we got to the three month mark and I remember you, you and Dan were like yeah we're going to keep doing this for another three months and I was like not only was three months enough six was and you did it and I think you came out with well more than it was uh, more than one a week it totaled I think because you had some products that came out multiple flavors um and some flavors for more than one product, but it was one hell of a streak that we that we saw. But yeah, so how did how did twenty twenty go for you guys? Um, in terms of I guess compared to others, yeah, twenty twenty was like for everybody a, a very hard year. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of pivoting for us, but in the end, it, it ended up uh, the best year we've ever had. Uh, so we broke just about every record. I don't like to really. Uh, bloat on that because I know how how many people got hurt out there uh, but for us you know it was a challenge it started off pretty good and then COVID hit and we had no clue what was going to go on I mean we came in you know the first couple of weeks and you know we heard that all businesses in Jersey were going to be closed down and scared the hell out of us uh, so we just started literally having meetings every morning to figure out what to do and I started a get to rent uh, warehouses in other states so I can shift inventory from one state to the next if this state got closed down. And, you know, we were kind of in suspense as to what would happen to our business. But uh, we eventually just made kind of our own decision that we were considered essential. Uh, Homeland Security uh, broadcast that any, uh, any dietary supplement or type company, uh, food company were essential, but that didn't come down to the state. So we just printed that. Uh, we printed our license, uh, not our license, but our FDA documents. We made copies for uh, every employee so they could carry them because there's a part here early in Jersey where they weren't even allowed to be in the streets. They had to be do, you know, going someplace essential to be out. So they carried these documents. Um, you know, then we, we heard we, we do a lot of business on Amazon. We heard Amazon was shutting down completely, taking in any goods that were not essential. And that was important to us because we were about to shift yeah all of our inventory to Amazon, switch our website to Amazon in case we got shut down. You know, that was one of our side plans. So it was like every day it, something hit. It was like, there was no longer such thing as a one year, you know, goal or, or, you know, putting together anything that, that could stick more than sometimes a day. So we had our, we, we had, you know, our, our boardroom became our war room and every day <laughs> met, everybody met and we just sit there and say okay what the fuck is going to happen today and what, what are we going to do and it was just like it was a pivoting you know game every single day let's we chose abc beat it work let's go to c and uh you know that that helped us get along i think a lot of companies froze you know they were scared to death and they have a right to be so. I mean, none of us have ever seen anything like this in our, in our lifetime. I don't know if in the lifetime of this country we've seen anything like this. So the normal thing to do is pivot. But I'm, you know, I'm very happy that I have a team here and I have a crew here that uh, just uh, did not freeze. And I hate to say this, but it was really uh, it was an invigorating time because if you're not going to freeze up and you're not going to shy away and you're not going to cancel all your plans, but you're just going to go head first into it. It just becomes kind of kind of uh, exciting, uh, and that's what we went through day by day. I mean, we did things that we've never done before. The first thing we decided is we're not shutting anything down. We're gonna we're gonna plow through. So 
all the product launches that we did. Uh, we did some of the biggest product launches we ever did. Our Freedom Flavor mm -hmm. is without a doubt one of the hardest things we have ever done in this company. Uh, we thought it was really important to do. We knew it wasn't going to sell out crazy or anything because people, you know, just weren't responding, you know, to, to purchasing uh, sports supplements at the time. But the country was in such disarray and everybody was so depressed. We just thought uh, it was really important to launch that and uh, show respect for the military and, you know, show some respect for the country and try and get people thinking a little better. Uh, in the end, you know, uh, COVID uh, was very trying, uh, but we had some experience in the past that kind of really helped us. And obviously manufacturing, it, it, it was the key to us. Uh, when COVID first hit, it was kind of like what happened, uh, I forget the, uh, that uh, reactor in Japan, you know, that- uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. Uh, yeah. And uh, uh, when that happened, potassium iodide, uh, was completely out of stock in the world. And potassium iodide is what the government gives out to anybody uh, within, I think, 20 miles of a nuclear power plant. And I had uh, seen that, and we had a boatload of it here. I just I bought out every ounce of potassium iodine uh, in the country from every single vendor who sold it. And uh, we became the only company in the world, literally. I mean, in the world. You can go anywhere on the internet. We're the only ones that actually had potassium iodine in for about 14 days straight. We would have two, 300 people lined up at our street, corporate executives, partners from Morgan Stanley. Uh, we were shipping 10, 20,000 packages a day at some time. Oh, and wow. it was kind of cool because it taught us, you know, how to watch uh, for things that were emergency trends like that. So when COVID hit, I just filled up a warehouse with vitamin C, uh, zinc, echinacea. I bought out every, every you know, kilo I could find across the country because I knew we're having problems with China already. Imports are going to shut down. Uh, demand is going to go up. And we just fill, you know, we invested probably, I think I invested close to a million and a half dollars just in vitamin C, zinc, echinacea, copper, and a few things like that. And, you know, we're kind of freaking out here because if uh, if we didn't need it and it didn't happen that way, we'd be sitting <laughs> with a, a lifetime supply of vitamin C. I'd be giving it out to everybody in the country for free. Uh, but, uh, that's what we did every day. We sat down as a team and we made a plan and that probably 90% of the plans did not work. So we shifted and 10% worked and uh, the company worked in the end. Yeah, I, I was, I was, I was not surprised uh, like when the pandemic kind of hit and once I started shutting down, I had seen, you, know, you would have seen as well in the past when Dr. Oz talks about an ingredient, how fast supplement companies can move when it, when it comes to time to jump on something. And when this happened, I, I was I was not just, I mean, I, I knew the industry was going to kind of go that route, but I didn't know just the companies like yourself, how creative you were going to get and how smart you were going to get like i just expected vitamin c that was kind of what i i didn't think we were going to get the bevy of immune supplements and uh, you know greens formulas that came out and um it was i was just so glad to see companies doing more than just vitamin c and echinacea and you guys were one of the one of the ones as well with uh, with the immune supplement that you originally gave um I was it was a free to uh first responders well yeah and, that was called the uh, first response so, and then you came out with the epicor as well was kind of early on and i just yeah. liked how you it kind of made sense as to what you were saying as to what happened you you pivoted very quickly vitamin c uh the um uh the echinacea and then you kind of just did well, other th yeah, yeah you did you did other things to kind of what you'd expect from a company who was quick on their feet. They're like, what else can we do? What else can, can people can people benefit from? Uh, and I just thought it was really cool to see that from yourself. And again, especially that, that first, the, the first response, I thought that was one of the coolest introductions of a supplement I had seen in a, in a, in a while. Um, there's a company, I'm not sure if you know of them out of Brazil called Black Skull. And they developed this series of supplements specifically for the, uh, it's like their SWAT. I can't remember the name of it, but it's their version of SWAT. And that was how they said that we, we put together the special edition line, but you could only get it if you're a, part of this 
extreme police force. And everyone was like, this is crazy. What the fuck's in it? I want to know what it is, blah, 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 right? They did it for a year. They just they didn't tell you what was in it. And then they said, you know what? Let's do it. Let's make it available. And it was an accidental introduction, but there was so much hype around it and excitement just the way they did it. And I kind of liked that with first response. You didn't do it intentionally. You did it out of the goodness of your own heart. You did it out of, you made this product for first responders. Yeah, we um, actually first sold that to the public. So yeah, I know that was what I thought was just yeah. When production just, was down and people weren't buying, you know, pre-workout and things, and that was one of our scrambling. You know, the local police came to us because we're we're a sports supplement company, but we also have a hundred or so general health products out. So we're known for vitamin C yeah. and botanicals and stuff like that. So we started to get vitamin C and zinc and all these echinacea things to the, the local police officers to help them. And uh, that became a mess because they had like 18 guys, I think, who had it, but they're all different bottles and they're all calling me up because one's a 60 day supply, one's a scoop, one's a pill. And I'm like, okay, this is not going to help. If we want to go further, let's just make a product. Uh, so we made first response and it started out giving it to uh, the local police in this area and it ended up uh, going to everybody's hands. <laughs> yeah, we, we, I think we put in about $350,000 into that project uh and we you know we outfitted entire police forces you know 70 or 80 in new jersey alone uh homeland security military hospitals uh you know, fire departments entire some entire townships where we did the you did protein as well at, i believe wasn't yeah, it? We, it was yeah the pro- that wasn't as big so we did protein we had a uh we couldn't even get bottles at that time but we had an alcohol <laughs> food program for the police and fire departments where they pull up in the cars and they bring their own alcohol bottles, you know, <laughs> squirt the bottle, and we refill them out of our huge 50 gallon drums of alcohol and they would drive off. Uh, we did that. Uh, when it started to free up a little, the beaches couldn't open because nobody had sanitizers. So then we bought, uh, we worked with Essex Grain. They helped us out you know, tremendously by getting us vitamin C when nobody had, uh, and they helped us get uh, sanitizer. And we had that, that sanitizer to all the beach uh, lifeguard stations down in like Belmore. And that's how they ended up being able to open for the summer. Uh, so, I mean, I'm really proud of the team here because everybody jumped in on that and it took a crisis. And, uh, but we, we did what we thought we could do and, and really, well, I, I think we really helped. And I think my, my team feels great. Oh, about I, it. You know, I think you did out of it, an, yeah. an incredible job. I think you were the, because again, like you said, a lot of people were frozen. A lot of people didn't necessarily do anything. Um, brands, some brands just went about their way. But I just liked what you did because again, it was very obvious that you pivoted. You you did what you felt was necessary for, for people. And then you had the whole, the first responders, as you said, $350,000 for a first response. It wasn't, it was very obviously not to make like a quick a money or anything. It was very much, what can you do for your fans and followers? And I thought, I myself thought that was very obvious that that was the intention behind it. And, you know, some other brands were, I had some companies that were a little bit different <laughs> and the other way around. And, but it was just, I was just very, very happy to see that again. And, and, and it seemed to me very genuine that you were just doing what you could to help. And I, the first response, and again, I, cause you put it out there, then you didn't, then, then the formula slowly came out like, it was like a month after you because i just no one really knew what was in it and then i was like not only have you put together a supplement you put together a beast of a immune supplement this was this was no joke (laughs) it had all the basic elements they needed we have to be careful because we can't say it's antiviral we can't mention covid yeah yeah. but you know as a nutrition company we know that some of these things definitely help with immunity if we can build the immune system then we can help you know uh, even with all the stress these guys are under as first responders. So we had to be very careful with what we said because we didn't want anybody to believe that here's some miracle product and you're going to take this and you're not going to get COVID. So you're on a fine line there between trying to help and you, where you can actually hurt them by telling them the wrong thing. And we also had to be careful because, you know, we, we didn't put things like echinacea and botanicals in there because people sometimes have reactions. So we had to be very careful with our mitts because we're literally giving it to entire police departments. Yeah. Uh, three, 400 you know, police at one time. The whole department gets sick and we're gonna be you know, in a lot of trouble. So we had to test it out. We had to make sure that what we're, what we're putting in there you know, didn't cause any gastric problems or anything like that. Uh, 
Uh, and the big thing about it for us is that it kept everybody employed. You know, if we didn't do that in the beginning, I would have probably had to let go three quarters of the staff for the first month or so until we started tuning into other stuff. And I really didn't want that. I wanted my team to uh, stay here and, and stay employed and uh, not have to worry about that. They had enough on their minds with, you know, their family and their health and other stuff. Uh, I was, I was just, again, I just thought it was, because again, you didn't share the, formula you didn't go out there saying best immunity formula it just slipped out i remember I, the only reason i saw it i think someone sent it to me it must have been on a i don't know how i saw it and i because i didn't get the facts panel from you i just saw the list and i was like it was three grams of vitamin c in this thing again like if any other brand were to do something like this i would have expected them to short change i would have expected them to do you know whatever uh, they needed to it, it like, actually it changed over time because we didn't have uh, <laughs> everything in the beginning. Uh, we, we used, uh, you know, we, we really believe in Albion and we didn't have one of their minerals, but as soon as it came in, we switched the formula up. So we used all Albion minerals in there. Uh, we added selenium once that got in because there was no. Oh, wow. <laughs> so uh, the, the formula actually got better from first to second. <laughs> uh, I mean, you're doing it for a reason. You're doing it to help nurses and doctors and these people that are really on the front line and we're, we're coming out with another wave of it now. We just finished man, excuse me, uh, manufacturing. It. So it's going back out to them again. Uh, so I don't know, I'm, I'm just super proud of my team. I mean, everybody stepped up and uh, did a phenomenal job. People were scared to come in, uh, but when we did this, they, were, they felt that they were helping out the community. So everybody really pitched in. And we had other companies. I mean, uh, Essex Grain uh, threw in, like 5,000 bucks to us and uh, our flavor company, one of our flavor companies, Zoom, uh, found out about it. We didn't ask any of these companies and they sent us flavor uh, to help us out. Uh, Albion, uh, when they knew we were looking for for uh, all these minerals and they were out there, they donated uh, 5,000, you know, every bit, every bit helped, you know, and uh, a lot of people joined in. Uh, UPS joined in and gave us 80% uh, off of uh, USP, U UPS. 80% off uh, overnight shipping so we can get the stuff out to guys out in Texas and all like that. So it was a cool community thing where a lot of companies joined in with us. Um, because in, in amongst, well, not really in amongst all this, I thought you did this uh, this launch a little before the madness kind of came about was you did a uh, the Irish whiskey cream for um, St. Patrick's Day. And that was like March. So that was kind of, yeah, that was kind of before all the shit hit the fan, I guess, as you could say. And it was my like early March, second week of March or something. Um, and that was a big one for you. I thought it was big because when you did the teasers, I was like, well, you could kind of see in the label that this wasn't going to be your typical label. There was there was very obviously a lot of color to this thing. And then when it came out, I was like, well, this is I just thought it was really cool with the illustrative approach. It was different to your usual stuff. And even if you told me you were going to do a different label to your standard, I probably wouldn't have thought you were going to put a giant you know, character on the front. And, and I just didn't think you're going to do that. Big leprechaun? Yeah. yeah, like, I, it, it, I just thought it was really different and cool coming from a company that seems so, uh, I just, I don't know how to just official or like different like you have a standard and it, and, it, and it seemed like you stepped out of your skin a bit and we're like let's just let's just fucking do it let's just throw this guy on there and see what uh, happens it was and cool and um so i mean the the question i have is when you did that because what was it, a few months later you went and did the, the freedom line uh and that was very similar a bit more expansive you had three flavor three limited edition flavors um was that because of the success of Irish whiskey cream and, and how it was received or did you already have that planned or was like already in your mind? That particular one was, was not planned. We, we had a lot of fun with the Irish whiskey. Uh, the artwork wasn't, you know, was stuff that was put together that was out there already. And we just enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, our uh, customers really responded to it. It was like, hey, let's have a little fun for once. So social media enjoyed it. Our customers did. And we just got to July 4th and it was a few months beforehand, uh, probably about uh, May-ish. And we decided to do this and it just grew and grew and grew. And we ended up with three flavors that we never had before. 
We put inclusions in one, apples, but the artwork was just so cool. I mean, we did all the artwork in, in house. It was hand drawn or, or drawn on the computer. And it, it took like close to like 80 man hours for each of these labels to be drawn out. It's insane. Uh, and coming up with the names and all, but it was, it, you know, when COVID hit, it just, you know, everybody was just down all over the place. And we just decided to do something fun for the people again and, you know, do something that was a little patriotic and uh, worked out great. So the the you know, the freedom series, I thought it was very obvious. It was a it was an evolution or an extension of that uh, the Irish, the St. Patrick's Day flavor. Uh, you had the um, you had the the kind of birthday cake, the apple pie. The apple pie, I will admit, I was extremely surprised by that one because you guys sent me them, and I was like, these are these are out there flavors. These aren't my usual chocolate vanilla. But the apple pie, I was like, I, I didn't I didn't expect. I don't know what I expected, but I didn't expect to be the one that I was going to just saw through first. Both me and my wife went scoop for scoop to see you finished because I just thought that was delicious. I don't, but if you had asked me an apple pie, and it was those inclusions, I think that did it. But if you had asked me if I would enjoy an apple pie protein powder before that, I probably would have said no. But uh -huh. that thing, I was amazed. I was surprised by that. Um, but then obviously, uh, you kind of, so that line wasn't around for, it was meant to be limited edition, but then you made it, two of them were made permanent, correct? Or was it the- Yeah, two of them, I think we're out of them now because we're switching back to uh, labels and stuff. Bombs Away, uh, which was my favorite for the artwork because my father was in the Air Force and uh, that whole kind of, the, the Air Force and the Navy did it also doing that. The artwork on the on the front of the, of the airplanes was just really, really cool. And uh, Brian was in here. We just gelled on all this artwork, everything that I, was in my head, which I'm not really always good as playing to artists, he just got, and that stuff came out perfect. But that flavor wasn't the best of them because the cherry going with uh, a whey protein, it might come back out in our clear protein now. Uh, but Miss America Pie was, you know, killed it. Freedom Fetty was the best, but we did a new muscle matrix uh, in Freedom Fetty flavor. And that thing is just, you know, we can't get, keep that in stock even now. I thought it was just cool, cool to see, because again, the Irish whiskey cream was 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 a great launch. It showed a different side of your bio, and then you just went and blow it up. We were like, we got even more. And then you went and did for Christmas. It was the jacked up gingerbread, and I assume that was also an extension. Yeah, it all started with the Irish cream. You're absolutely right. You were just yeah. waiting for the uh, the occasions to do them. <laughs> I don't know if you saw this one, the pumpkin pie one. Oh yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. There was that one in between the um, yeah. the Halloween. I almost forgot that one. Yeah. Well, the difference, I think, between the Irish and the rest is with all the work that went into creating the artwork and stuff. It became like a family project in the company. Where the Irish was, we just put it together quick and we used kind of like clip art and stuff. After that, all on all of them, it's all created right in-house. And it was like the whole team would get together and we'd have these brainstorming sessions on names and flavors and what could be on the label. And it was like out of the box. You know, no rules, no regulations, except what the FDA says. So, you know, if you look, I don't know if you ever looked on the back of these, like where we usually have our uh, list of uh, all of the amino acids. I mean, these guys, like, you know, we have bone dust <laughs> and bat's blood and snake venom. And people are looking at it and nobody notices because it's always on the bottle. So they see, you know, post-it blankets. And all of a sudden, one person in the internet noticed that we could replace all this stuff, you know. And uh, so it kind of got fun because it was, went from just a panel of a label to the entire label being themed out so is it is it i'm assuming based on how much fun it sounds like you had with all with all, all six of them i have to imagine you're going to continue them on in 2021 i mean it's it seems like it's got to be an ongoing part of nutribio now with especially with the hit three for uh fourth of july yeah it definitely is uh well everybody loves it to follow the customers love it the stores love it and we just have a blast at house day it takes some of the monotony of, you know, every day, you know, the manufacturing, you're in the manufacturing facility. So it's all rules and regulation. And yeah. Every, you know, everything's got to be done a certain way. And it just kind of made it a little more fun. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to be keeping, keeping up with that in 2021. Yeah, okay. It does seem, it does seem like a, just a, not really a cry out, but just the other side of Nutribio. Uh, again, the, the, the characters, the, the style, the colors just seem the opposite of the usual, uh, uh Saying. Yeah, I just thought it was really cool to see. The um, obviously the other big launch you had uh, in 2020 uh, was um, 
the clear way isolate the the, the fruit the fruity flavored um that was something i assume because i would say it's it's not really a, it's a, it is a trend i guess it's kind of happened over the past year or two i was curious and you'd probably know the answer to this because a lot of brands have come out with them not not a lot of them have made them taste good and i have had yours and i think i mentioned to you previously tastes damn good it's it's, it's my go-to for my morning smoothie but the um what was it that i guess encourage a lot of brands to do this because i always thought before two years ago i had tried the fruit flavored protein powders and and they were shit to say the least like they were just bland they were just they were just really funky they just didn't even gel well they left like a chalkiness in your mouth was there something that happened like ingredients wise manufacturing wise that just all of a sudden companies could make the fruit flavors taste good because it just Uh seemed to come out of nowhere yeah, that, that's an interesting one for us. I, I think uh, they came out because you know, I, I love whey protein. I love the flavors like the chocolates and all that, but they are very milky in their, you know, in their consistency. So you can't do like citrus flavors very well. Yeah. And for something that's refreshing, you want more of a citrus flavor like, like you would do in a pre-workout or something like that. So a lot of people just get kind of tired of, of the, that milky style that, that a regular whey comes in, whether it's casein or concentrated or isolate. Uh, and that's kind of what, 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 where it came from originally is to create a, a way. So you had, you had, you had all the value that whey does as far as the biological value, PD gas and, and all of that. So you're really high end protein, but we're just turning it around a little and making it more like a Gatorade style taste. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, I wasn't so into it so much, but uh, what happens here is one person in the company, you know, <laughs> wants something goes crazy. This time it was Dan, our VP. And he was just tired of the old way. And he, he, he wanted this, but he thought they all tasted horrible. And he pushed and pushed and pushed until we all did it. And uh, we put the, the lab together. And the key was uh, getting it to taste good because that type of way, when they process it, does have a little aftertaste, chalky aftertaste. Yeah. But it's also the foam. So when you shake these, your, your entire shaker cup is going to foam over. And if you shake the product up that we did, you'll see it. The whole cup is filled with foam. But literally in two seconds, the foam just drops right down. And in the old original ones, and a lot of that are still out now, you can't you can't get rid of the foam, and it's hard to drink. Uh, so you know, we got the taste together. Uh, we went back and forth. It was a big project because we just didn't like the taste in the beginning. We didn't want to sell a product that was foaming over the top. But uh, the team got it all together, and uh, I think we came out with a, a great launch. Uh, we're relabeling it next month. Uh, it was so successful. Uh, we brought in uh, food artists now, and we're instead of doing oh, like. Nice. Right. Instead of, you know, pulling uh, whatever pie or whatever off of some pip art, you know, something on, on the internet. Now we're doing that all in-house and we're hiring professional artists to do the photography for them and stuff. So that whole label's coming out. Of it. And that was just a, a big launch where we, 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 we made a number of batches that we were prepared. You know, if we did sell out a month later, we'd have it a month later. And in the last minute, I just said to the group, you know what, just make it all at once and we'll, we'll, we'll store it, which is it's, it's much easier. We sold the whole thing out in, I think, three weeks. <laughs> we had made enough, but I don't remember. I don't want to quote. Uh, I think it was three or four months and it was gone in, in two weeks. Then we didn't have it because we had planned enough based on what we sell with other products oh, wow. for, for a quarter and it was just gone. Uh, so. Well, it's basically done a lot better than you had ever expected. Yeah, and it's, it's the stores are loving it. Our, our customers are loving it. It's, it's uh, a switch over from the standard, you know, consistency, mouthfeel, and milky flavor system of way. Yeah, like I said, I, I had tried some four, two, three years ago, and I was just, I was much the same idea. I was like, oh, I will give it a try. They had like, the, they had the typical fruit punch, like they had just bought over pre-workout flavors and it tasted like a fruity milk, which just threw, I think everyone off at the time. And then brands like yourself have come out and uh, I was hesitant to try it, but you sent it. And I went for the pineapple. I was like, I, I do like pineapple. And again, I was ready for a, I don't know what I expected. And pineapple is an odd flavor again, if you can remember the fruit punches from years ago. And I mean, it didn't taste like protein. It tastes like an amino. And I was just pleasantly surprised that, yeah, just again, and I was curious on the surge because there are a few others out there doing it now. Um, but you guys nailed the sweetness on the the pineapple. Um, same with the mango. 
watermelon I thought was good as well. I'm not a big watermelon fan, but I drank that one too. So I was um, really happy with that one, surprised, because you didn't really tease it. You just kind of came out, dropped the thing, and it happened so fast. I didn't have time to guess what you were doing. Um, but yeah, it was uh, cool to see. And I'm glad that it did well, obviously, selling out four months. We actually hit something from you. You have put stuff up that's been top secret in the last few years. I'm like, how the hell did he get that? It's, it kind of pops up on your page or your site. I'm like, we didn't release this yet. I'm like, this guy is good. Like, maybe I post something on a page somewhere. With him usually, usually you it is you. It out of the freaking blue and it's up there. Usually it is you. Someone will be like, hey, did you see Mark Glazer say this? And it'll be like a random status post. It'll be something where you've shared something in the bottom corner. I'll be like, well, if it's on his Facebook, I guess it's okay. <laughs> It pays, it, it pays pays well to be your friend and uh, on social media and catch all those because I feel like you keep things secret, but then sometimes you just do things and sometimes it drops out and you don't really care. And I love those moments. I get in a lot of trouble. <laughs> I know it is. There's the team <laughs> making the big secret. They have all this launch strategy. Yeah, all of a sudden I'll be like tonight, it'll be 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. I'll be sitting here. And I'll just, uh, I'll just not think about it. And I'll post, I'll be walking through and I'll see the bottles on the line and I'll start the line up and take a video of it or something. So yeah, they're trying to discipline me. They put, they put a leash on me now. Like we have the new product line that's coming out soon. And, you know, I'm being threatened myself that if I release it in any way, shape or form, name, product, anything, you know, I'm going to be lynched in my own company here. Well, I mean, that was that that disciplined pretty well here now. That was going to be my next topic, but obviously I'll, you know what? So we know that you mentioned to me, you have a new brand coming out. We won't say the name. We won't say any categories. Obviously I'm going to assume it's going to be your, your, your main categories. Just that's just, I'm just going to assume that. Um, can you say the difference with this line? Uh, just for people that are unaware, haven't heard much about it. The key uh, difference, I guess, between. We're not uh, saying much about it. It's just kind of uh uh, it's kind of unleashing Nutribi a little, doing things a little differently than we would normally do. Uh, okay. So kind of like a blend between the, the I guess, the, the special edition flavors you did and then the, because uh, when you did um, uh, the pre-extreme and sort of, I guess, we looking, we talking more like just outside of the norm for you and that's all we're going to say. Yeah, it's, it's outside. It, it's going to be some serious, serious formulation. It, it's gonna, it's gonna rock the industry just in the type of formulas that we're doing here uh, huh. and what we're putting out. So I, I think we'll be ready for it around the beginning of March. Uh, it's been a, a huge project, without a doubt, a huge project. Working with yeah, you, you were saying you're working on it for a while. Yeah, we've been working on it for a while. We're using, you know, specialized ingredients we haven't used before. With the quality that we do and all the testing that we have to do you know, we, you know we, we've just had so many issues with getting the ingredients that we want and making sure you know they pass third-party testing and they do what they're supposed to do uh but we've got it now and uh it's it's on it's uh it's, uh, it's just about ready to go about another 60 days and it, sh it should be out there and it does i think everybody's gonna really enjoy it uh, it's not a, it's not a neutral bio product it's a totally yeah you're super <laughs> Yeah. So it'll be a completely separate brand, not like a like a, a, an extreme series or an advanced series. It's just going to be an entire brand. Yeah, totally different marketing. Everything's totally different. Yeah. Okay. So will it be, uh, I'm assuming it won't be on the Nutribio.com site. It'll be separate sites, separate everything. Yeah, I think you just try to talk about so I accidentally let out some information. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I see you get in trouble with my team tomorrow. <laughs> I'm trying not to make you say any names or categories like i said i just i this is what i do but you know this. Uh, you and I are camera, and I'm like clear my office out yeah i did I got uh, it. yeah so i mean all we all, all you know <laughs> we'll leave it we'll, we'll stop it there in case you slip up new brand coming from from nutribite currently expected around march it'll be uh more intense formulations i guess than what you currently offer we don't know what categories we don't know names separate brand entirely um, I'm excited because it sounds like I said I, I quite liked the the uh, out of the box stuff you did with the special edition flavors. Um, and if this has been in the works, and we're talking formulation side, which yeah is your specialty, Glacier Unleashed I think would be an interesting interesting thing to see 
uh, on shelves, regardless of what it looks like or the categories you take on. I won't make you say any of that. <laughs> but I feel like that's enough to, uh, to, to be excited about. Um, and I guess we'll, we'll have to finish the, the, the episode off with, I mean, actually, there's probably two topics. Uh, the first one will go is obviously the, the, the new warehouse I just saw you post about on social media. Again, no products in the background, but you are con big congratulations on that. It was obviously a big, uh, big step forward for you guys. Yeah, we uh, just took 30,000 square feet and it's uh, going to be solely for distribution. So we're opening a state of the art distribution center. Uh, it's, it's, you know, we're expanding. And we want to make sure that we can supply our customers. We don't overexpand. We don't have back orders. You know, it, any company to tell you right now, it's a disaster out there. Uh, trying to manufacture, you know, you hear these companies that have products in stock and people are making fun of them. Uh, it's not really their fault. I mean, Every day you come into your company and things that you've been buying for 15 years, like bottles that you never change all of a sudden that you get them in a week, they're gone for three months. You know, last week we ordered boxes and you know, they're supposed to come in in two days and there's no car gated halfway around the country. So they can't even make boxes for four weeks. COVID has had such huge challenges uh, and it's kind of got us to think, you know, we've got to be better prepared in the future. So this warehouse, will just be increasing stock tremendously. It'll let us take all of our shipping uh, out of this facility, our distribution out of this facility, our pick pack center, and move it over there. So we'll regain about 15,000 square feet here that we can use toward manufacturing exclusively. So it will increase our, our manufacturing capabilities and capacity, and it'll let us uh, get product to our customers quicker uh, and with less downtime. And that's kind of what it's all about for us creating the best possible service we can. I did notice that in 2020, you guys had an impressive uh, distribution expansion internationally. I saw a lot of mentions of you entering countries here and there. I thought it was, so I'm not too surprised or I am surprised, but uh, I guess it makes sense to add that, that warehouse space and size because expansion like that and international is, is not an easy thing. And I thought it was awesome to see the just the Nutribio name get out there internationally. Is not, again, it's not easy to do. Um, and you guys did it at a time that seemed difficult for everyone, really. Yeah, it, it was, it's been rough for that. It seemed like in April, May, to stop dead, like international just cut off. Uh, but then it picked up and we picked up a lot of countries, deals you know, that take time to do, and labeling and regulations and stuff. And uh, But it's, it's paying off and we have some great partners out in, in different countries around the world. And uh, you'll see a lot more of Nutribio around the world. Over this oh yeah, I, I imagine it'll, it'll be Nutribio. It's, it's for a lot of brands, I feel like it's unleashed year in 2021. And, and it seems that like you guys see yourselves out pretty well. Um, so the last topic is uh, obviously the, the Sean Clarita. Uh, I mean, it's, that was such a cool, like you, you couldn't have, I know you didn't plan it, but you just couldn't have had a better story. I mean, you signed him in uh, early, early. It kind of was planned, Sean. Yeah, you know, Sean's been using Nutribio products since back in 2006. So we're oh, not wow. going. We're not going to bring an athlete. We did a, a few years ago. We brought a couple athletes on from the outside, and it just wasn't me, you know, to have these guys that we just signed on that didn't use our product and just start using it. And these were really good athletes, really good people. And, but it just wasn't my company, so I let them go, and uh, I felt horrible. I actually did a public apology to them, uh, you know, just letting them know why, because I didn't want people to think it was their fault. It was just Mitchell Bio that wasn't like that. But Sean's been using uh, our products since uh, he was in high school, 2006. Uh, <laughs> so Dan's been trying to get him into the company for many, many years, and uh, he uh, he's just a terrific guy. And uh, uh, I think Eric Schwartz was here at the time, and Eric said, "Okay, we, we really got to look at him." And uh, I talked to him again and uh, Sean just said, look, you know, I'm going to win this year. I'm going to win. I need help. I need someone to back me so I can get out there and focus 100%, but I'll a little break on the show. So I looked at him and I said, okay. Sure. <laughs> uh, so, you know, he's been, he's been using product a long, long time. And that's what we want. We want that authentic feel to Nutribio, not just, uh, you know, somebody coming in. Uh, and so it worked out great. It was, yeah, it was just, it seemed as though Sean Carita planned it, but the look in his eye when he said, I'm winning this thing, and the whole world said, there's no fucking way. Sean Carita had a size to win. That guy works harder than any human being I know. 
is more disciplined than any human being I know. I've been in martial arts my whole life, so I've been around this for my whole life. This guy for that year, just incredible. He deserved every every bit of what he won there. Uh, he did not break his, his protocols at all, zero. Focus 24 seven on it, and he deserved it. So we're really excited. We're, we're, we're happy that we were part of it. I just thought it was cool to see because I've watched him over the years and every year they like they kind of say the same thing. Oh, he's too, he's too short. He doesn't fill out his frame. And every year there's the same kind of mention. Oh, he's put on a little more. And you kind of saw the same story each year. And then this year you signed him quite early on before we even knew the Olympia was like actually going to go ahead. And then uh, you did the celebratory uh, pistachio delight protein powder, which I thought was, because again, I didn't know body. I'm not that into bodybuilding, but I don't think a lot of people had him expected to win all the way back when you did it. But you kind of brought him on board, and you believed in him straight out of the gate, like, and you were just fully behind him. And this is, and at this time, to your fans, it's not like you were saying your future Mr. Olympia two twelve. You weren't saying that. You were just welcoming him to the team, mm-hmm. and that was just cool to see. And then again. Nine months later, eight months later, he goes and takes home the title in incredible fashion and seeing his reaction and then, because he's easy, yeah, you're right, he's a hardworking dude, yeah. deserves yeah, we, every bit of it. Yeah, when you get to know him, when we went there, I just had the feeling it was his, you know. Uh, it was just a weird feeling, right? just knowing the guy and knowing how disciplined and how much he wanted it. And you could almost see it on his face when he was up there. You could just see in his eyes that, you know, and that moment where, where they're like, and uh, and you're yeah, we're all yeah. listening to say whether it's going to be the N words come out, the new. And if you look at Sean, it's, it, you didn't even hear his name before he fell down to the stage and just started crying. He just heard the word new and boom, he dropped it. I mean, it, it, I couldn't imagine having have been him at that second and that excitement of a lifetime of passion all coming together beating the entire odds of the world going saying you can't do it. not in a negative way you know he's, he's a smaller guy and, and bad he just proves the world wrong i mean yeah again that was the i don't even think it's 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 uh he knows it yet i think he's still in shock and cold. it is um, and it, it was again like i said i'd seen him year after year and the commentator said the same thing each year and it was just you just had you can't help but feel happy for a guy who's heard that he would have heard it he know I guarantee he would have heard that people say the thing and then he just comes in and just smokes it just yeah. it was incredible to see and again you did the celebratory flavor which i thought was like i said you did it the first when you signed him and then you celebrated with i just thought it was a great story yeah, a great he, close to the year he's so humble he's such a great human being so uh yeah we're, we're excited for him actually i i met him uh, two years ago, one year, two years ago, we he it was at the Olympia. I was staying down the road for like three months, and he did a photo shoot at the same gym that I would always go to. And he was in the middle of the photo shoot, and um, I don't know who he was with. It was with a magazine. I don't really know, but I was doing the hack squat, and middle of the set, middle of the photo shoot, in between his his, his exercise, he comes over to me and he said, "And that's a crazy good hack squat." Like, it's and I'm like, this dude's. One percent body fat shredded to the bone in the middle of a photo shoot. He didn't know who I was. I didn't wear anything that said stack. Absolutely no clue who I was. And then I messaged him afterwards and I said, "Hey man, I just want to say thank." He's like, "Holy shit, that was you!" And because he followed me on Instagram and he was like, "You should have fucking told me." And I was like, "I was just thought it was a really cool because you would never get anyone, uh, Big Ram, Phil, any of those guys would never do that. I've trained." in the same realm as him. They're very, and he just stepped out of his way. And I was like, that was yeah. small, but it was, I think, a good reflection of his character. And Absolutely. You know, we didn't even get to see what he looked like the whole time. He wore a baggy. We had to make him extra large, triple extra, whatever. <laughs> but we were doing a five-part series on him the whole time and frustrated because we can't <laughs> do shots with him. Everything's got a, a big shirt on, or maybe you'll see a bicep or something here or there. He just, you know, he had his way of doing it. He didn't want the world to see what was going on. He knew what he was doing and he didn't want a hint to it. So we just went along with it the whole way. And uh, in the end, he stepped up on that stage and boom. Oh man, that was, that was, that's, that's, it's just an awesome story and a, good, a great close to 2020. So 
Um, yeah, I mean, we can end it there. Thank you for coming on. Uh, I'm excited to see what 2021 is going to bring. Um, we've got the revamped uh, Clearway Isolates, the the brand that we don't know anything about and won't say anything about until March. Um, and we got I'm a sure really cool product coming out in two weeks to watch for. Really cool. Another real fun product. Is it, are we talking product? Are we talking special edition flavor? Or we uh, can't new say product. it? A new product. Oh, okay. Something that's uh, fun. It's going to be cool. Okay. Uh, and we also have you know, our, our, our uh, plant protein coming back. That's going to be Oh, great. yeah. Oh, okay. So I'm assuming like a revamp or as per usual, better than yeah, the last. Uh, and have the last one with the BCA content, you know, trying to mix protein, the plant proteins together to get the right BCA count. And oh, okay. Yeah. We've seen stuff like that. So, you know, we put a lot of work into doing, into getting this. And, it actually has a PD cast of uh, 95, almost as high as whey. So you have a vegan protein, a, a plant source protein that's you know got uh, digestibility as high, almost as high as a, a whey protein, which is really good. And we knocked it out of out of, out of the box of flavor, uh, no grittiness. Uh, we, we didn't. A lot of companies are using sucralose because I guess you know you have this huge part of the market that doesn't really care about whether yeah. they care or not. They just don't want dairy. Uh, but we decided to keep it as a as a natural product uh, with no sucralose in it. So uh, I think it's going to be a, a big hit. Our, our our customers have been waiting for it for a long time, and uh, so that's that's going to be fairly soon. I don't know if I was allowed to say that, so I might. Be <laughs> I didn't even yeah, ask you to say yeah. that. that. I was ask, I was asking about the new brand, and you dropped. I didn't say hey, the other stuff. I can let a little give you a little insider information. Okay. Uh, is the is the plant is that because you're saying you're finding the right balance? Because I know a lot of brands have been doing basically just the not traditional but typical sources, and then they add extra leucine, like a gram or two. Or have you done something different? No, I, I actually didn't add leucine, and I, okay. I, there's, not, there's nothing wrong with adding leucine. But just just because I spent the lifetime, it feels like you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're gonna go with this. No, no, against protein spiking. Mean, that's not protein spiking. Yeah. But companies that were using, you know, aminos like, well, creatine is not really amino, but creatine or taurine or something, or glutamine, to spike those nitrogen levels, and they didn't really have the protein that yeah. was in there. So when I did this, we I wanted to add some BCAAs, but then I said, hold on, how am I going to explain it to my customer After that we're doing it this way? Yeah. And if I did, I would do it. I seen a couple of companies that are doing it the right way. Their protein content is based purely on their protein. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they list a, they list it separate. Yeah. So um, nothing against that at all, but training and working so long on that, I just thought it'd be a hard explanation. I said, let's just spend a little more time and see how we can process this protein and blend this protein and get it in a way where we can get get it where we want to be. And we did. So we're kind of happy about it. Um, I'll be interested to see that one again. I thought, thought we were only in for the new brand. Turns out we're in for a little more. Uh, yeah. <laughs> When is this going out, by the way? Can you hold it for three weeks? <laughs> this, this is either going to be out tonight or tomorrow. So uh, yeah. I'll, I'll put it out early so that they, so you don't get in trouble for Monday. Well, at least it's no video, so people can, can't expand my room. <laughs> oh, trust me. If you had something in the background that, that I thought I could have spotted out, I would have said something. <laughs> there is. It's just the camera. I don't think it's good enough to catch it, so I'm not worried. <laughs> oh, damn it. Okay. Well... It was awesome having you on for the first time. Definitely have to get you back on uh, later at some point. But uh, yeah, it was definitely a great chat. Uh, again, congratulations on one of the best years I had seen from Nutribio for some time. And uh, yeah, thank you for ha thank coming you on. You know, thank you for all the support you give us and actually you give the whole industry all year long. Uh, you know, your, your site is kind of cool. You get to see everything that's coming out and watch what's going on. And uh, Everything is fairly portrayed, and uh, it's 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 really cool. I use it as a it's as a go to on a regular basis. Yeah, you know, there was a time probably like I could say 15 years ago where I knew every product, every ingredient that every company had. That product. <laughs> well, you can put any name out, and I tell you what it was. Now I go to your page, and I'm like, what the hell? I've never even heard of this company. You know, they're, they're reflavoring their product for the third time. I don't even know who they are now. So uh, you know, you do a great service uh, for the industry that way. So it's kind of cool, and the customer. It was much easier 10 years ago. I will tell you that when I started, I had 20 brands. Like, I mean, 
you, you talk about them, you've really had the industry covered and now it's, it's ridiculous, but it's, it's only ridiculous compared to where it was. If I had started this three years ago, I probably would think it's normal, but it's, uh, it's a massive amount of brands and, uh, we try and keep everybody updated, even when the, the brand owner doesn't, doesn't think something's going to be out there yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, somehow I think we're going to find uh, this new protein label before, I, before we release it. <laughs> Are we talking about the thing in the corner? Oh, no. What are you looking at? No, that's tequila. Over there? No, see, I'm out of frame on that. I'm a, I, you keep looking over in that corner, but... Oh, no, that's my... That's my bomb's way helmet to match. The, oh, uh, that's match. awesome. <laughs> no, yeah, it is in the corner over there. You can't see the music turned, actually. Yeah, I think my I think my camera's cut off at what you're looking at. But it's going to be uh, exciting for us. It's really going to be a good year for us. Uh, well, I'm excited to see everything that comes out. So we'll, we'll make sure we stay in the loop. And uh, yeah, thanks again for coming on. Absolutely, man. Thank you for having me. Really appreciate it.